Tag and Brando podcast. You've made it. We're here. You're here. I'm a little hot. Whoa. Okay. We are here. Excellent. We are here together. <laughs> yeah. Which is weird. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, welcome to our special edition 20th episode. Yeah. That's crazy. That's crazy. But Where I guess the the special thing about it is nothing for you. It's just for us because we're actually in the same place, room, docking. Yeah, together. you might not know this, uh, recent listeners, but uh, Taggart and I do not live in the same state, so we have covered it up very well ish <laughs> in sending files back and forth and just knowing exactly what the other person is going to say. So we just respond. <laughs> <laughs> we just do it at different times of the day. And just it's very, <laughs> it's very amazing. <laughs> yes, he's uh, like, I talked about this, and I was like, oh, okay, oh, okay. I could, I got re- some things. I'll record my responses. <laughs> oh, me, cool. Yeah. Uh huh. So uh, hopefully, we are going to talk over each other less, <laughs> but that's probably not going to happen. So welcome to our we'll episode. We the uh, we'll new year approaching. Uh, if you're listening to this right when it comes out, uh, happy. New 2020, and Dude, we that's want, weird. Yeah, that's really weird to me. 2020, like, yeah, the the year or the the show. Oh, 2020. <laughs> okay, Barbara Walters. Yeah. yeah. No, it's very strange. This will be the 20th year of my graduation. 2020. Oh, is there a reunion? I have not heard anything. <laughs> so get on that. Class of 2000. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's going to be fun. <laughs> I'm interested to go, I think. But, uh, yeah, it's very, that feels weird, very weird since that was like yesterday. Anyways, 2020. It's a new century, kind of. Yeah, I mean, if we're being decade. sticklers about it, yeah, that's what I mean. New decade. This this is a this is a decade that actually, like, I think everybody can settle on, like, the, the, the terminology for yeah it's the new 20s yeah exactly because <laughs> <laughs> it was always like the aughts and then the nine and the no teens I'm and we yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're we're now back to stable we're, we're stable now <laughs> well i mean we could say the 20s i guess or the 2020s right but uh there was the 1920s which we call the 20s i think i'm i'm voting for the new 20s the new 20s the new 20s that's fair yeah, it's good. Then, we just add new, and we can go we'll, from here. Yeah, in a hundred years, we'll 30s. let them hash that out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, figure it out <laughs> yourself. It'll, it'll be like if we'll you, leave all our problems for you. Isn't that what the it'll be generations like before do? In Futurama, where they call it Old New York, and you don't really think about it until you really think about it. You're like, New York is just such a word that you don't think of like, oh, right. it's old, new, or they call it New New York versus Old New York. And you're right. Like, anyway. Well, uh, speaking of old stuff, uh, you got some something to follow up on. <laughs> from, this from might our last be the cast. first time we've actually ever said, "Yeah, we'll do this," and then did it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, last time we last week we spoke about the word Eve, as in Christmas Eve or New Year's Eve, which our little pa- last week's podcast came out on Christmas Eve, and this one should come out on New Year's Eve. So I hope that's when you got it. <laughs> but uh, we thought, when did this happen? Whatever. I didn't do a ton of research. Well, I can't yeah, give it, you a, a huge reasoning of why this happened, but I can give you the the nutshell of when we started using Eve to mean the day before. Yeah, as basically. opposed to saying like, oh, yeah, let's do dinner Christmas evening. Right. And it's like, oh, okay, well, let's get together. It's like, oh, well, you mean Christmas Eve? No, Christmas Eve Ning. So, take it away. Right. So, Eve as a word uh, in Old English uh, around the 1200s or whatever. Um, the old 1200s? The old 1200s, <laughs> if you're familiar. Um, Eve meant evening. So, you would use that inner. Well, interchangeably, I don't think they said evening back then, but they said Eve. So when you were having supper, that was in, you know, Eve. Right. So dusk, like when the sun goes down. Right. (laughs) This definition says between sunset and darkness. Um, Yeah. And so it went like that for a while until the late 13th century. It started 
Eve started to mean the day before a saint's day or festival. So old holidays. So old holidays, right. And it kind of transformed, and by the late 1700s, it meant the moment right before an event happened, basically. So like the night before. Um, Any kind of event, it was the eve of... Thanksgiving or whatever. I forgot Not how that. animated you are. When you <laughs> <talk>. <laughs> You're just like making these like just, grippy hand gestures. Hey, man. But uh, yeah, I mean, that makes perfect sense. Don't make me self conscious yeah. for being here in the same <laughs> no, room as you. Um, but I mean, like, yeah, you think about like Halloween, you, it was like All oh, Hallows Eve. Eve. Yeah, yeah exactly. And stuff. So are we going to get to, instead of Christmas Eve, just Christmas, 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 Christmas. <laughs> Chris Ween? <laughs> Halloween, Chris Ween? Chris Ween. It's funny because, I mean, you think about things like Christmas, we used to be Christ Mast, you know, and then uh-huh. All Hallows Eve and stuff like that. We're just like lazy. <laughs> <laughs> started saying it wrong over a long period of time, and they're like, that sounds right now. Yeah. Ooh, oh, oh, was holiday. a word that I was thinking oh, of no, the other you mean, day. You mean a holy day. <laughs> right. Yeah. We're just, we're just trying to get through this – the season as fast as possible. I mean, we're going to be like Christmas, Christmas, Christmas. If now it's Xmas, like, right. Yeah. We can't be saying lots of syllables. Uh, anyways, but, uh, yeah. So around the 1700s, late 1700s or whatever, it, it specifically, Eve specifically became, it wasn't interchangeable with evening. By that time they said, even for evening. And Eve was that specific time before, the festival or yeah. whatever. So there you go. And also Eve of uh, Adam and Eve. Um, another visual thing that uh, I have to uh, describe to you. As I looked over at your phone, the uh, ad at the bottom was for Michael's Crafts, Michael's Craft Store. Ooh. And so I was like, is he getting this from Michael's website? <laughs> like, I, we have a lot of people come in and while they're buying their ribbon and, and when they like to ask us questions like, about the etymology of words. So, yeah, okay. Yeah. We sure. get a lot of people like fighting over, well, is this for Christmas dinner? Is this for Christmas? <laughs> and this paint might yeah. go well with that project, but uh, also. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so good follow up. Thanks for that. Um, You're we welcome. did also double check, um, even as in the difference, like being even Stephen, like the same kind of a thing, has a completely different etymology Ooh. from German, possibly Irish, meaning twins. So there you go. Cool. Well, let's. <laughs> I didn't want to leave people hanging <laughs> that, like that. that are like me Ooh. that go, oh, okay, we explained what even came from. That way, but what's the... Anyway, so, even Steven. Fair. <laughs> okay. Uh, English, right. English is a crazy language if you want to get into it. <laughs> I don't know. So, we are uh, going for the question of the day related to tomorrow day. Ooh. So, Taggart. Yes. What New Year's no. resolution... <laughs> what New Year's resolutions have you stuck to... For a considerable uh, amount of time, uh, and which are are noticeable, not noticeably, but can you recall that you just did not fulfill at all? Okay, something <laughs> something just came to my mind actually, which is hilarious because I'm very bad at the New Year's rev- resolution thing. I actually kind of don't like it, <laughs> like <laughs> the whole an ideal. Like, um, right. But you know, that's neither here nor there. Um, <laughs> the thing that just came to mind. Um, I usually I'm really bad at writing the new dates when the new oh, year comes those around. Are the worst. <laughs> so one year I was like, this is my new year's resolution. <laughs> I will write the right year going forward. 100%. No mistakes. I did, did, I did do that one year. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I was it very didn't... like, you will not mess up. Um, and that's the only one I can think of. <laughs> I like how it was one year. So it's not that's the thing about New Year's I don't Res- even remember what year that was. Yeah, New Year's resolutions is they're they're not like uh you know, game changers as far as like, oh yeah, I'm gonna you know, stop smoking and do all this kind of stuff. It's like well like that's a good time to start, I guess, but like how many times is it's like, oh yeah, well I'm gonna 
you know, watch less TV or whatever. And you're like, yeah, that lasted for six months and then it's gone. Or even if you do do it the whole year, it's like, well, that was a year of stickless or stickler date writing. So <laughs> I'm giving it up. I'm going back. Right. It's just like uh, it, it, it. If we're going to get into the idea of it, this whole go for it. <laughs> thing um that was just Taggart thinking this is <laughs> i completely paused my recording accidentally oh um <laughs> i was cleaning my mouse pad off and clicked the button and then it stopped my recording so okay. sorry um dang it more editing for me um but uh what was i saying the oh, philosophy of uh, yeah it, the the whole thing of a new year's resolution does not lend itself to longevity Right. It doesn't. Well, it's it's more of anticipation than it is of like, you know. I get I get like here's the new year, let's have a new me, let's have a new lifestyle, let's have a new and, and the, the the heart is in the right place, but because you can reset it every year, it has worked into it the the mindset of if this doesn't work, I could try next year or if this mm-hmm. doesn't work, I could try something new next year that supersedes or completely wipes this one out. Right. Um, and it's just not set up for like actual success. That's just my take on that. No, that's totally fair. I mean, like that's the thing is is it is a, a cycle in a sense where you think about it as like, oh, man, I want to do this thing, but it's going to be difficult so I need like a reason to do it, and like New Year's resolutions has become that reason, right? Like right. that that's that starting gun that most bad habits or good habits don't you know don't have. It's that it's that that threshold, right? And you know it's like so so people start it. And so first off, the problem is they delay because you think of your New Year's resolution in like. You know, September, you're like, oh man, I really need to read more next year. I'm going to, that's my New Year's resolution. Like, yeah, next you year. <laughs> you're like, it's February. I'll try this like, next year. year. Yeah. There's no way I'm doing that right exactly. now. Exactly. So you delay whatever your, uh, you know, whatever your resolution is, right. you know, till that, you know, that specific time. And then, you know, the other problem is a lot of people then go cold turkey or. Right. I don't know if you're doing something. Is that hot turkey? Like what's like what's the what's like I'm going cold? back to a previous conversation? What's the opposite of cold turkey? turkey. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're like yeah, if you're like I'm gonna go to the gym every day or four times a week or whatever it is, like you know that's is that giving up laziness? Cold turkey? I think like so. it's, okay, it's just starting There's something a, hot. Yeah, it's just hot turkey. <laughs> just going in full full bore, I guess. But um, but yeah, that's the thing is like. And you can see it in the gym, like all the time. If you consistently go to the gym, you will see a decline come November, where people are too busy and they're having to run all over the place, and they got to do all this kind of stuff. And the weather's bad, so they don't go to the gym. And then they make the commitment, like January, gonna do it. So then it just spikes in gyms, January. Gyms and it, gotta love New Year's resolutions. Oh yeah, because exactly. they're like January through March, maybe even April. They, yeah, exactly. Spiked people are in there buying. Yeah, them. and it's terrible if you go out. to the gym consistently because then it's right. Just, you, it's just your routine's packed. totally screwed because um, it just gets so packed. But um, yeah, I think one of my New Year's resolutions that we that I've actually more or less stuck to is so um, my girlfriend and I we do the whole thirty. Yes, meal plan eating regiment thingamajig we've been doing that for a while and like um the biggest thing about it is we needed to find a place in the year to put it so it's not necessarily a new year's resolution it's just it works in conjunction with other people's new year's resolutions because when you're on this it's a very restricted eating plan there's no right grain no dairy stuff like that and so and so you, you don't you do this year round you just say this period of the year we were mm-hmm. we're gonna work through the whole 30 right and then right continue to eat what we want to eat after right that. but so we were when we first planned this we were trying to figure out we're like okay we should plan it and we started i think it was like september 
because we're like, okay. there's there's no major holidays, so we don't have to like worry about you know like getting crit or getting candy or going to dinners with people and stuff like that. You know, it's no major holidays, but we still found. Or no, when was it? Maybe we did it in March first. Anyway, we've cut, we've moved it around a little bit. Okay, but January seems to be the perfect time because it January right yeah, off the bat. Because okay. a, um, you don't have you know you have more time. You know, January is a pretty slow month. There's no major holidays. I mean, sorry, President Day, but <laughs> there's not like food associated with President right. Day. You just go buy a mattress right. or something. You just eat parts of a cherry tree. Yeah, it's exactly. Fine. Um, and then, but the biggest advantage to it being in January is that's when a lot of people are doing their diets and their workouts and right. their, oh, I ate so much over the holidays. I'm just trying to be, I mean, it's not necessarily like New Year's resolution. I'm just trying to be, some people are more understanding when you say, oh, thanks. I'm, I'm, I'm good. I don't need brownies. And they're like, oh, okay, you're doing some kind of diet. I get it. Like, you know, so that month is just uh, like, <laughs> it's, it's we could, we could do it anytime and we do it not for a whole month, but we do it and, you know, a couple times a week. Um, but at that same time, it's the perfect time because <laughs> it's most expected. Right. So that makes sense. Yeah. Makes so. sense. Um, But yeah, how years. many times have you guys done that? No. Um, I want to say probably five. Five it's years, really? Our fifth year doing it. Crazy. Yeah. So, um, getting better and better, I guess. More, more, and more cookbooks are coming out and stuff like that. So. Yeah. So, so just like the taste of the meals are getting better, or just your guys is dealing with it is easier. Yeah, because the biggest thing, and I would say this about most diets in general. And stuff is planning. Sure. So it's time consuming. Yeah. So and like a burger's easy. Dude. Exactly. <laughs> like if you're just like, oh no, I don't have anything for lunch. I'll just grab some chips from the break room or something like that, right. and you know, like you know, pull something out of the fridge. That's. But like the problem with the thing with the whole thirty is it's breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and all the easy stuff, cereal. Uh, you know, fast food and everything like that right. is all no go. out. So you right. got to make all your own food because you can't even have added sugar. So we have to make our own ketchup, make our own mayonnaise, make our own salad dressing, all really? that kind of different stuff. So it's basically we plan it out and Sunday we just make a bunch of stuff and then parcel it out through the week kind of a thing. Nice. So you like to make stuff from scratch though. Oh, yeah. So, so that's, that's kind of cool. Yeah, it's not necessarily that intimidating as it would be for a lot of people. Dude, I would have a hard time doing yeah. it. I know I would. Yeah. Ugh. Which means I probably should do it. Yeah. But, uh, well, and the hey other oh. thing is also hey we, we know how, like, we're like, okay, we'll try this recipe. And if it's good, then we'll put it on the docket for like later to make like twice or three times as much mm. kind of a thing. Because sometimes if you make it and you're like, this is what we're going to eat all week and it's not good. <laughs> Then it's just like you're like, sludging this is through. Be a rough yeah. week. Yeah, <laughs> you're man. trudging through and just being like, "Oh man!" Like I, it's almost just better to forget it than to take it to <laughs> take take it <laughs> out. Oh, oh shoot! Yeah, to my kitchen. But, yeah. Um. <laughs> but yeah, so so I would definitely say if you're gonna do something, definitely January is just the time to start because it's it's just in our culture now. Right. Right. But if you're going to do something and you think about it, just do it that day or make a plan for it as soon as possible. Right. It, I mean, and that's the best advice, right? If you want to do it, then you got to you got to start as soon as possible. Right. Because you, you put it off. If you actually yeah. want it to happen. Yeah. And if you really want to do it, you'll start it now. Mm -hmm. Get it going. So, Or you'll just be frustrated because there's a million people at the gym and you're going to be like, oh, this sucks. It's like, but if I start my... <laughs> My resolution in May, right. then I'm, I've got six months of sweet gym time. Enjoy <laughs> sweet gym time. I just, I, I, it's so funny because it is so baked in to like the whole workout thing because it's like you can get all the stuff for Christmas and 
Then you well, yeah, you think start well, in January. Kind of relax, you get your and November and you get your beach body ready for summer. So Let's that's all the, that's right. all the hype. You know, it's just like okay, right. work out during the winter so I could be ready for the summer and you know whatever. But so well, yeah, I mean, I, that's one thing I was going to say earlier that I kind of forgot is that January is just a rough month weather wise from for for most of the country, right? Yeah. So, and it can be, all the holidays are gone, so it's that month that can be, I mean, that in February can be really depressing as winter depression goes or whatever. Right. So, to have something new to do and to focus on, I could, that's good, and Mm -hmm. I like that idea, Um, but. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, like you said, it's, it is. It is a very interesting, like, how many different aspects of it make it. So that is the ideal time to start. Right. New year, no big family plans for most people, you know, weather's crappy. Yeah, you can just so, go out and do something. You, yeah. So you're fabricating something to do. Yeah, to exactly. Stay, stay busy or at least not cooped up in your house or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. So, yep. um, dang it. Now maybe I have to do a news resolution. <laughs> Just started today, man. I mean, it's a couple days before. 2020, baby. Yeah, 2020. <laughs> it's the... It's the uh, well, that's the other problem is people also think New Year's resolution, if you miss it, <laughs> you know, then they're right. then they're done. They're like, ah, oh, man, uh, I, I didn't start I didn't done. start on January. Well, that's 364 days wasted. <laughs> yeah, I got... Uh, you can have a good day. <clears throat> yeah. Yesterday was bad. You can have a good day today. Yeah what they say mm-hmm. someone says that um oh i again i had something i lost it um <laughs> <laughs> it's hard podcasting's mm. hard uh, um <laughs> you want to switch to triggered memory and see we if can. that we joggle can. something loose oh i was gonna say 2020 <laughs> this, this is the year of perfect vision oh right right so you need to have a perfect vision for what your year needs to look like and uh, and uh, make it happen. I wonder what they do in non-imperial places. Because 2020 means I can see it from 20 feet, you can see it from 20. Like, I, right? Right. Because that was like the thing. Like I had like 2,600 or something. But that's not yeah. actually how yeah. they measure your eyes. You not know. anymore. Well, yeah, but I mean, if you get a prescription, they're not, they don't really do that numbering system anymore. It's like, right. you got a negative four. Or exactly. Know, That's what I mean. Five of stigmatism. Like, yeah. Um, but. Do you know your prescription? Well, no, I got LASIK. It's good to go. I'm 2020. I'm back. So, but, but do you <laughs> actually still know your prescription? Are you at a, at a zero uh, in both eyes? Uh, yes. I don't know. I haven't, <laughs> I haven't, I haven't been. I mean, I assume, and this is me assuming a little bit. I assume 2020, which we call perfect vision, is zeros, right? Right. Farsighted is going to be positive numbers. Right. And nearsighted is negative numbers um, because it's past 20 feet or in front of 20 feet, right? Right. Um, So if you have LASIK and you have perfect vision, you should be right around a zero. Zero, right. Uh, I am a negative four and a negative four point two five. In yeah, one of my and <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, for those that can't see us, this yeah. Taggart, Taggart has just removed it. I'll, I'll narrate. I, Taggart has just removed his glasses. He has his hand yeah. <laughs> roughly about a foot a foot from his face. Yeah. Yep. So. And he's measuring it with the, his hand itself. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't, that doesn't the distance quite work. between his fingers. So from the tip of my nose to where I can see clearly is like eight inches. Yeah, it's not very far. <laughs> <laughs> and seriously, anything past that, things just start to blur. Right. And obviously, I can make out the shape for distances. You know, I can. There's a there's a satellite dish on the house next to us. <laughs> oh my god! There, there's a satellite in orbit around. <laughs> my my nearsighted is terrible, yeah, but my farsighted is amazing. It's not bad. Yeah, that's zero. That's like a, a uh, old Russian satellite. <laughs> exactly. I can almost make it out. It's like, uh, oh man, 
I can't. Like the lettering is faded. Sput Nick, Vigor, <laughs> Sput Vigor. <laughs> oh, but uh, uh, they just name him Sputnik fifty seven hundred and eighty. <laughs> Oh, but uh, yeah, I can I I know it's I I know it's a satellite dish only because what else would a circular thing be on the top of a roof? Um, but I can't really see it. It's really blurry. Mm-hmm. But anyways, you're welcome. <laughs> Thanks for coming down that tangent with us. So some people have visual things on their podcasts. We literally just to go vision. <laughs> Talk about, about vision. vision. What You're can welcome. we see? I spy. We could have filmed today. <laughs> we was, yeah. We didn't. That is true. Um, <laughs> my phone's right here doing zero things. We <laughs> could have filmed this. Um, You're welcome, listeners. Um, Okay, so let's talk triggered memory. Cool. We're coming into 2020. If you didn't get that already. Again... I graduated 20 years before 2020, which is 2000. <laughs> For those bad at math. <laughs> and uh, for those that don't remember or those that do, at the at the end of the year 1999, like Prince said, <laughs> we partied like that year on that year. Um, there was a... A big computer scare, which was deemed Y2K, which I still think is like and that has to do with the year, right? Y2K is year, the year. 2K, year 2000. Year two. That's terrible. Really? I, I thought mean, it was very intuitive. I, well, it's. <laughs> I'm not saying it's not intuitive. Oh. I'm saying, what a terrible. What a, that's weird. The like just, just the moniker it? of it. Oh yeah, it's like, uh, you know, during Y two K, but it wasn't like the whole. I mean, I guess it does count as the whole year, but Y two K came to be known entomology wise as <laughs> the, the moment we switched from nineteen ninety nine to two thousand. The millennium bug, as it's also referred. To. Right. So, so we're just we're just, triggered memory today is we're going to talk about Y two K. How is Y2K for you? Okay. Um, 20 years in the making. (laughs) If you didn't know or didn't remember or never quite understood, the big issue was that computers back in the day, uh, and I think, was it all computers or was it just Windows computers? It was the majority of computers, yeah. Um, Their internal clocks did not go past the year 19... 99 well the issue was back in the day to save space because bits bits cost a lot of money like now you can buy a terabyte flash drive with oscar the grouch's head on it for like 12 bucks what where i don't know send me that link (laughs) i mean you can buy data like storage that is fairly would, would contain the entirety world. of the computing world of 1976 and have it as big as your hand like it is right. seriously it's crazy so ridiculous in order to save those precious little bits they would abbreviate the year of uh the year in the right. 1900s so baked to, in the, right. yeah so baked in the system um, we, 1926 or 1976 would just be 76. 76. So like January 1st, 76 would be one slash one slash seven, six. No right. problem. Right. And so there was this whole thing. It was like, it's going to reset our, our clocks, all of our computers back to the year zero. Yeah. The um, year 1900. 1900. Because it's assumed the 19 is assumed so right, right, right. banks that are keeping track of your interest with this old with the system is saying you've had your money in the bank for twelve years yet da 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 because it's nineteen ninety nine and then boom all of a sudden instead of it being thirteen years it'll be negative eighty six right. years. So 80, there was a big whatever, scare that people would lose years. money. There mm-hmm. was a big scare that computers would just shut down and like right. not run things properly. Mm-hmm. And uh, delete a bunch of stuff because 
The other right. dates don't make sense. It's like, oh, this is 100 years in the future. We don't know. The so funny crazy. thing about it to me always was that if we knew about the problem, obviously somebody's trying to fix it. Mm-hmm. The populace as a whole knew that this was an issue and people were freaking out. People were buying water. People were <laughs> <laughs> run on Twinkies or whatever it was. And uh, and so obviously somebody's doing something to try to to, to fix the issue or whatever. Um. Yeah, and so there was this big thing when you know midnight came and we clicked over to two thousand. People thought it was going to be Mad Max or something crazy. Yeah, people thought nukes were going to go off. They thought all this kind of different stuff. So, what is? Are we just talking about the thing? Or are we talking about our experience? Yeah. How was your watching? Because we lived through this. This was a thing. We did. Yeah. <laughs> Do you uh, remember where you were when nothing happened? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, I remember exactly what where I was. So okay. Um, so I was gonna. I was hanging out with my buddy Spanky um, that night, um, and we were, you know, in our teens. So we were just, you know, ready to go out, and you know, you're you're always, you know, you're gonna be up till midnight, and you're gonna be like, you know, doing all this kind of stuff. Well. His mom was worried, not that the computers were actually going to, you know, run amok and, you know, lawnmower man us all. But people but, are crazy. But she was worried that the the belief in that, oh, security cameras are going to get shut off so I can go rob a bank or – the you know you know all this kind of different stuff or cops aren't going to be like the radios or whatever stupid criminal some mom mentality yeah, is exactly take over and- so she was worried that you know basically people are going to be out there doing some stupid stuff and so she wanted us in so it wasn't bad i mean like spanky and i are awesome hanging out together we're pretty good at it <laughs> so <laughs> so we it's had not, some practice yeah it's not like we you know uh, we didn't. We were like worried about being cooped up. It was just like we just. She didn't want us to go anywhere. She didn't want us to be out on the street and all this kind of different stuff. While while the uh, thing turned over, but the kicker for me that I specifically remember, um, aside from that, is we went to uh, some uh, some youth thing for his uh, for his church and stuff. And um, I just remember it was like in an indoor. Uh, like soccer arena or one of those like inflatable soccer arena things. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and everything. And, you know, it was in the evening and we heard, you know, some jets fly over, which is not necessarily uncommon in uh, Colorado Springs with the Air Force Academy and everything. But we heard those and I like look over at him and I'm just like, you know, it's midnight in like Russia now. <laughs> Because that's the thing that other people, that also people didn't understand, is the if the Y two K was really that bad, we were like be one of the last Japan, people to yeah, deal with it. exactly. Like, Japan, we heard. yeah, Japan's yeah. really the ones that are sweating bullets over there. Well, maybe we wouldn't have heard. Ooh, that's that's a good point. Yeah, as as the Earth like <laughs> rotates, like you just see the cataclysm just wipe across. But that was the thing is that's what I thought of at that moment was. If these are jets or rockets or whatever, it would be in response to what's happening overseas, which is already being wiped out or whatever. So I'm like, at least we get some advance warning. Right, you would think. <laughs> so, um, but yes, all of a nothing happened. Oh my gosh. So we was, just hung out that night. <laughs> uh, so much nothing happened that I don't actually remember what I was doing. Okay. I don't. I don't remember. Um, probably something similar to you. I really don't remember who I was with or where I was at or, you know, it's not like a Kennedy You're about thing. to graduate high school. You'll remember where you were or when the Beatles played or when Kennedy was shot or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you were trying to get some accent that was like... Was that an accent? You're morphing into like... um, But it's not... What is it? Sullivan, what's the guy that introduced the Beatle? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Really good show. Oh, uh, it's so, like, he just like, where were the Beatle? 
<laughs> that was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but the point is, like, it did not have that effect on me. It was not that impactful because nothing happened. And I and I do remember thinking. Uh, <laughs> something like, well, that's what I thought would happen. Or, you know, basically mm-hmm. like, oh, yeah, well, that's w- what I figured. Because um, I, I don't know. I'm not dumb. <laughs> but uh, I, I honestly didn't think anything would happen and that everyone would be fine and that I'd still have to graduate from high school. Um, so there you go. Yeah. So, I mean, like the the... It wasn't necessarily, like, hysteria. Like, people, as far as I remember, nobody, like you said, people were buying supplies. People were buying supplies, but it wasn't riotous. It's not like people breaking in and said, I need right. this water. No, right. Uh, freaking out uh, like that. But uh, people were worried. They're like, we don't know. Mm-hmm. Tomorrow might be a whole new world. Yeah. Uh, like Jasmine says. Um <laughs> Oh, that's what that means. <laughs> right. She's talking about the future. She's talking about the apocalypse. Uh, but uh, at least she had someone to share it with. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyways. Uh, so, yeah. Tell us your Y2K memories of nothing. Um, or any any kind of big kind of big scare that turned out to be nothing. I mean, because you think about... Uh, like the Cold War and all that kind of different stuff, like, you know, doing duck and cover on and everything like that. And like, you know, we were we grew up at the tail, the very, very, very tail end and of the Cold War. Of the Cold yeah. War. And honestly things happened in the Cold War. But right. to most everyday people, yeah. It was nothing. It was nothing. And so it was very much it's it's just kinda of interesting for that like, yeah, kind of group panic to set in. Um and everything just to be like, well, no, that's not, you know, not really what's what's going to happen. Because this, they knew about Y two K as we've deemed it, the issue up until, or they knew it about it like in eighty four, right, right. And so, you know, how many of the computer programs from eighty four were replaced by the year two thousand? Right, know? and even if they weren't. They right. could put a patch in fairly quickly if it's a Windows and do yeah. your stupid automatic update or whatever it is. <laughs> oh, that, that's you know? what happened. The one guy that doesn't do his automatic <laughs> update. He's like, what happened yeah, to man, data? He's like, ugh. Dang it. It's like, oh, <laughs> you like, didn't do your update. You updates. must do this update by midnight <laughs> yeah. tonight. Um, there is a looming problem, though. A looming problem? A looming problem. Not lumens. No, not like a glowing problem. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I just, I just like, uh, just went to Wikipedia to look up, you know, Y two K and everything. Uh-huh. Um, and apparently, there's been several like issues with with uh, computer programs similar to Y two K. Like September 9th, nineteen ninety nine was an issue. Because because it's nine 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 nine, uh-huh. and um, a lot of databases kept track of dates. If there was no future, if there's no end date, it was just sometime in the future. It was just they would just put nine nine nine. Oh, so yep. so that was that. that was an issue. Leap years are an issue if you're a lazy computer, like if your programmer's lazy and they just say, oh, oh it's every every four years because you know it's. You know, divisible by a hundred, but not four hundred. Blah 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 blah. There's a year 2010 problem, um, because um, just the the different uh, binary code decimals, like when it clicked over to ten as opposed to zero zero, or like like it was also shortening it to like nine and like 2008 was just an eight and so on and so forth. Um, so really? some people, their text messages, the biggest problem was their text messages said 2016 <laughs> instead of 2010. So you're getting a text from the future. <laughs> but um, awesome. there is another one, supposedly the 2038 problem. And this one is interesting just because some programs 
are based on a 32 this is this is going to be very fascinating for some of you <laughs> very very boring for others we're so, getting into code here so strap it come on now i can explain this in one sentence though there's a 8 bit integer representing the seconds from january 1st 1970 that represents the date and come 2038 that kicks over to where we need more than 32 bits to explain it Uh. so like in excel you'll notice like if you ever put the long date it goes all the way down to the seconds well that's a number and it's based off of january 1st 2000 or 1970 so excel in the next 18 years is gonna have to figure out another way to do that if they haven't already (laughs) crazy yeah, because we've run out of seconds. <laughs> yeah, so. That's weird. It is weird. It's weird to think about because you're like, what did, it's, the, it's the same amount of numbers, technically. But it's weird. But yeah, well, I we're, understand. Yeah, we're always adding more and stuff like that. So that's the craziest thing about a lot of computing that you don't think about because you're, you're not sitting there writing it is – so many things are just like, ah, that's a future issue. Like, you know, like... Eh, just talking yeah. about leaving our issues for yeah, the future before. exactly. And computing does that all the time. Yeah, I mean, you look at, you know, building cars to run off gasoline, and you're just like, this is genius. This stuff's everywhere. <laughs> you know? And it's just like, oh. Oh, but you now. guys, I know, like, it'd be funny to see, like, some inventors of different things like that be like, you guys didn't figure out another solution for this? But, like, I was just making, like, I was just making a patch. I didn't expect this to last forever. Right. Um. That's, this is kind of random, but that's one thing. Do you ever, have you seen, um, uh, historical roasts on Netflix? I haven't watched them. Oh. We talked about it briefly, I think. Right. Did I mention uh, this? Well, yeah, because I did. I mentioned Shakespeare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just awesome to be where they're like talking about it. Shakespeare, why didn't you make Cleopatra like, you know, more of a well rounded woman, you know, like more accurate to history, this, that, and the other, blah, blah, blah. He's like, I didn't know you'd be teaching it in school 400 years later. <laughs> like, I was just doing it to make a buck. <laughs> it's entertainment. Yeah. I'm not writing the Bible it's, over here. <laughs> I'm just making, I'm just entertaining the commoners. <laughs> it's like, it's like, <laughs> it's like if we went SpongeBob SquarePants as like, you know, in, uh, in 500 years is the way that people understand our culture. <laughs> right. What is the, what is, is that Futurama where the, the aliens watch our TV and think yeah. it's our history? Yeah, Alan McBeal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, you're like uh, you guys yeah. missed it. You guys missed it. But. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, you know, not everything is made or thought of to last the test of time from when it's created. Um, you know. That's but, funny. Yeah. So, yeah, hopefully... 2035, 2038 is not. Yeah, good <laughs> a luck. Big deal. Good luck. I'm 38. Yeah, we got we got still almost got 40 years. So yeah, but um, or 20. They they cleverly call it the Y2K38 problem. <laughs> That's terrible. I just think I don't I don't I don't know. I guess that was a real 2000s thing, right? To mix letters and numbers. I don't. I was never a big fan. No, nah. No, the best 2000 memory that I have is from 1998, <laughs> and it's the M&M's commercial where they go in the red and yellow M&M go into the supposed CEO of you know Hershey or Mars or whatever, and they're like, and it's just like we need to start our campaign. For it's like the new millennium, and he, the guy's like everybody's gonna be milking the millennium. He's like, but not in '98. And then you saw billboards that was like two M and M M M M and M, like three M and Ms in a row. Right. And I'm like, that is awesome. <laughs> Somebody's it's literally sitting there being like, oh. And then Cheerios did it in like 2000, and they had millennial che- millennium Cheerios and stuff like that. It's just funny that like, oh no, M and M saw this coming. <laughs> they <laughs> were on top of it. They milked it. <laughs> Uh, Literally, they milk chocolate. It. Um, nice. Yeah. 
So hopefully that spurs some memories <laughs> for you. Yeah. And if you were born after 2000, then... Then you have no idea what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Obviously, the 2010 bug was not a problem. <laughs> no, you're good. Yeah. But there's someone out there. There's something that we haven't thought about. Oh, there'll That's be some be issues, some fake issues that we'll control. run into. <laughs> climate control, climate change, <laughs> climate control, air conditioning. <laughs> yeah, we we have not figured out that thermostat yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it's too why hot. Is, but now it's why too does it cold, only have four? You know, so. Yeah. Oh, you remember that on the train? Oh. So so we will probably do a whole podcast on this. We should. Yeah, we should do that. Uh, but a quick insight, Tag and I were on an Amtrak's train. Happened. And it was really hot. Yeah. It was the, it was summer. It was just hot. And we're going, and we asked the um, the train attendant, the the tracks, like, it's not a flight. It's a, it's a travel, it's a, I don't know. We asked the attendant. <laughs> and we're like, we said, hey, ma'am. Hey, ma'am. <laughs> Um, can we, you know, it's like, is there air conditioning or can we, like, is there a way we can do, cause you can't open the windows cause the train's just traveling at, you know, it's going 60 fast. miles an hour right. or whatever. And she's like, oh, well, they can only turn the air conditioning like on or off. There's no like way to set the temperature. So we either have to just turn it on or we have to just have it off. And then she kind of just like left it at that and walked away. <laughs> and Taggart and I were like. That's how air conditioners work. <laughs> <laughs> like they, 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 there's like a, a threshold, the, you know, like the, it gets, it's, you want it at 72. So when it gets above like 75, it turns on and then it lowers it probably down to 70. And then this is AC 101. You know. <laughs> we just need some kind of probe. I know. That's it's like, that's how it's picking up on the heat and yeah. turns it on or off. <laughs> like, yeah, if it blasts at a hundred percent for 30 seconds and it cools the train down and then it has to come on again in another, you know, two minutes or whatever, that's fine. I'm good. That's how it's supposed to work. <laughs> Unless you got a human thermostat that's like flicking a switch. <laughs> that's just like, oh, I'm going to have to, now I'm going to wait, lick their finger. <laughs> like, okay, now I'm going to turn it off. I don't. I don't. Oh. I mean, I don't. It doesn't make any sense. If it's like a car where it's actual radiator and it's just like, I'm just going to take the heat and you can just turn it up real hot or real cold or whatever. Um, and that never turns off until you turn it off, right? right? If that's how the train worked, great. But obviously, it wasn't because <laughs> she said it wasn't. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah. Someone needs to get in there. Uh, this was a little while ago. Maybe Antrex fixed that right now. But come on, guys. Yeah. So, we can't be roasting. We can't be cooking people in your trains. Yes. Ah, uh, so tag. What is what is your new? What is new? Hey. That was a uh, sweet segue. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of making new things for Antrac, what's your new? Um, well, we had Chris Mouse. Chris Mouse. Chris Mouse. And uh, my wife had this thing for those we were given multiple presents to that she wanted something for them to do. Oh, okay. Something for them to... <laughs> I'm not going to remember all of it. <laughs> but anyways, she had different categories. Like so, yeah. So the people to... you're giving multiple... Okay, got it. Right, right, yeah, right. Yeah, right. right. Okay. So uh, this is like family members and things like this. Uh, she was thinking of four gifts. One was something to do. One right. was something to... Read uh, make or whatever. The rest of them up. Yeah. Read or something to wear was right. one. Um Gonna run through my gifts and see if I remember because <laughs> I can categorize them uh, retroactively. Anyways, but but you understand it's kind of those things. So, um, I've been wanting to get a better stereo for our SUV because the, it's got an aux port, but the aux port is bad. Just it's got a short in it or okay. the cable's not soldered well or something. So you 
jostle it and you you lose half your audio once, right right whatever side cuts out so i was like forever i've been like let's get a new stereo get something in there we can listen to some musics maybe some i don't know bluetooth in it or something um anyways so my wife <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you following the story she she that was the thing to do she bought me a stereo for the car now so you have, to, have do to do it install it <laughs> <laughs> she thought she was clever and but i was also pretty excited about it and the whole thing was she wanted to get it like she came up with the idea herself from to- me talking forever ago because I kind of dropped it um, and stopped talking about it. She didn't know how to go about f- figuring out what we would need or what fits or, or what, what fits. Like, yeah. she's not familiar with the one den, single den, double den situation or whatever. Right. Um, so she does all this research and calls all these places and all this stuff. And she's like, I was like, uh, I was like, I don't know what we need and how is it going to go and all the cost and blah, blah, blah. And then at one point she was like, oh, I'm not sure what to get you. And I was like, I have an Amazon list. You can look through it. She's like, oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. She looked through it and I had like saved her a car radio <laughs> for <laughs> that. And she was like, Yes. <laughs> So, anyways, that was kind of funny. So, I really I have a couple of projects to do from Christmas, and that's one of them. And I would like to do that sooner than later, but uh, probably have to buy a car kit for it. So, mm-hmm. I mean, that'd be the easiest thing. I can wire it up, but sometimes if you don't get them grounded right, you get the the engine whine, and oh I don't yeah, deal with that. Yeah, so yeah. I'll probably have to get uh, probably get a car kit just so that. Uh, I'm I'm sure that all the connections are solid, but right. anyways, that that's something new for me that I got, and something new I have to do. Yeah, man. I mean, the best of luck on that because that's definitely something that I've I've looked into. Yeah, um, even for like like my car is pretty okay, but uh, for my girlfriend's car, getting her new stereo and stuff because for hers, I think we talked about this. Like the radio doesn't work. <laughs> It doesn't work at all. Yeah. Just the radio. It turns on, but you get nothing. Yeah. So it's your antenna, probably. Yeah, but we've checked. I don't know. The, 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 long story short, we just <laughs> probably need a new setup or whatever. Um, but, you know, the more modern your car, the more, like, custom part you have to buy. Like, I remember buying a, a CD player yeah, yeah, yeah. for my... Uh, 85 Civic. <laughs> nice. Removable face. Yeah. Yeah, of you course. know it. Because you got to deter those thieves. <laughs> Come on, guy. You can get in there. Because guess what? There is very little security on that car. <laughs> I um, never quite understood that. I mean, if you have a savvy enough thief that he can tear your car apart and pull that radio out, mm-hmm. I say, go for it, buddy. Right. I mean, maybe in '83 it was a little That's easier. The thing. That is the thing, though, because like a little literally, easier, but literally, it's still, I could pull my radio out with two butter knives. Like seriously, all it was was you can seriously just slip two flat pieces of metal in on the sides, mm. and I'm sure there are tools for this, but butter knives worked. <laughs> you just slip two butter knives in the sides. Right. It unlatched, you know, what was holding it in there, the mounts. And you just slid it out, unplugged it from the back, and you were gone. So I mean, you got you shimmy yourself in with a butter knife. You get the <laughs> you get yeah. the radio out. That's the thing is like back in the day when they were so swappable, right? You could just literally just pop them, pop them, and go. Well, you could buy those kits, then you mount that in there so that you can do that, right? But you could have hard hard connected in. I'm sure. Oh yeah, like I could have probably gone like back up in the dashboard and like screwed it in or something like that but yeah that was definitely like oh i know i'm just gonna get the plug and play and this that and nobody ever broke into my car but it was definitely like yeah like you could pop the lock you could steal the most expensive the radio the doll the car cost a (laughs) dollar and i found 
like 73 cents in it <laughs> when I got it. Nice. So that radio was definitely like the most expensive thing in there. Well, that's cool. <laughs> so, um, well, but yeah, but ever since then, I'm like, oh, man, like, you know, because it's usually like the whole assembly, like with the, um, the air conditioning is tied into that and all that kind of different stuff. So, yeah. So even my, what is it, 2001? A cord. I put a radio in that uh-huh. not terribly long ago, a couple of years ago or something, year or two, whatever. And uh, well, it was kind of a pain to get in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, it wasn't too bad. But uh, this one might be harder. It's like a 2013. What is it? 2013? Anyways, it's kind of newer. Right. Um. So that'll be annoying. But it's nice. It's a. It's like a flat screen. You can Ooh. hook your phone to it and watch your nav on the screen and stuff. Nice. And uh, it, 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 uh, I gotta set that up for my mom. It's got, uh, it's got a backup camera I could install if I wanted to deal with running the wires through the whole car, which I might not, uh, but, uh, um, you just do it under the carpet or just on top of the carpet. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I'll have to figure out the best way to do it. But yeah, I wouldn't want a wire just chilling. Right. I don't have to hide it somehow. Right. But uh, but yeah, so it'll be fun. It'll be a project, and it'll take me way longer than it should. All right. <laughs> hey. um, How about you, sir? I uh, kind of want to talk about this. So Ooh. I, uh, I'm, I'm staying at my mom's for the holiday Ooh. and um i came across Humble something brag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um so i was looking for her remote and i'm just like going through she has a million uh, i don't even know what you like a million drawer things like cabinets that just are yeah, like just a lot of furniture that's drawery. Yeah, so she just has that's like a, that's a, just like that's an adjective, right? Yeah, end tables <laughs> and it's kind of drawery. Yeah, end tables and hutches and whatever all over the place, and they're all full of just random stuff and stuff. So if you're looking for scissors or you're looking for tape or you're looking for batteries, you got to look through like 15 drawers before you can find it. So I'm looking for her remote control to their TV, and I come across this bad boy. This is my old, and this is the thing. She's moved since I've moved out. Like, and right. So I have no idea how this ended up in her living room. It was in her living room. It was in her living room on probably you one guys of her are newer. Waiting with bated breath to yeah. feel what was to see what we're talking about. We can see it. <laughs> this, uh, yeah, this. Um, so uh, this was only in, ever in my room. I would assume, and I don't know how it came out. But I'll, I'll, I'll give you a little taste of it before. This is uh this is what I found. That is my mouth harp. <laughs> that, yeah. I that I remember specifically wanting when I was like a little little kid. Yeah. <laughs> because I just love I don't know whatever Where sound. Where did you see it? Where did you see a mouth harp or a juice harp? It's also called a juice harp. Juice harp. Yes. Um, um. Where did you discover said juice harp? I, I think I got it. I got it when we were on like vacation when I was like twelve or thirteen. Nice, just in probably one of the souvenir shops or something. But I remember wanting it since I was like a little little kid, just being like, "Oh, it makes such a weird sound." <laughs> and, stuff. and I That's exactly no idea how it worked like or whatever. And learn just obviously, I'm not like good at really playing it. But like you know, it's basically you put it against your teeth. And then you flick this little thing that vibrates and you hum uh, hum through it and stuff like that. But I remember flicking it and like the thing just springing back and hitting me in the lip oh, that's the thing, <laughs> or hitting buddy. me in the like, teeth. And like, for an amateur, yeah. those things are scary. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't know what you're doing, you're like, yeah. all right, I could kill myself or rip my mouth up with this yeah. thing. Let's go. But uh, yeah, so it's uh, it's a little something that uh, I might add to my New Year's resolution. Maybe we'll play a little practice <laughs> the yeah. mouth harp. Practice a little mouth harp. See if I can, you know. I think it was because partially it was probably because of you and you were way better at the harmonica than I ever would have been. 
Dude, so, I don't know. I honestly don't know how I got good at harmonica. Harmonica's hard. Harmonica is and not, sorry. and I wouldn't say I'm that good, but I can play single notes, which <laughs> is <laughs> an accomplishment. And I can bend it a little, mm-hmm. not quite like Beckham, but a little bit. <laughs> right. So that was yeah. I just it is in my memory tied to you playing the harmonica and cool. definitely. Something like, oh, well, what if I had, like, it's like Tiger's guy's harmonica. It's like, what if I had the juice harp? That'd be awesome. <laughs> little jug little band. mouth jam. <laughs> yeah, have a little jug band going. <laughs> Get uh, someone on the jug. <laughs> Somebody on the, the washboard. Yeah. So uh, so that is my old new that I, again. <laughs> nice. I, just the lead up of how I just randomly found it in not one of those, where, not one where of those I would have expected. Yeah. <laughs> and it was like one of the only things in there too. So I'm like, why didn't she just, she would have just thrown this away. <laughs> like I would have never thought of it again. Where did I put my I juice? Heart? Taking this oh, mom. Man. And she's like, Oh, it's in the, it's in the living room in one yeah. of those drawers. Yeah. So, or also known as a jaw harp. Yes. Jaw harp. There's a couple harp. of names. Yeah. But also known as a death harp. I made that one what? up. <laughs> Because it could kill your mouth. Uh, yeah, cool. Those things scare me. John, yes, the mouth harp. Yes. All right. Yeah. yeah. Fair enough. We don't have to get into it any more than that. But <laughs> <laughs> anyways. Anyway. Um. Also, uh, a little a little follow up for those of uh, the the yeah, yeah. mm-hmm. for those of you still with us, Sweet D. I'm looking at you. A little <laughs> shout out there, but. <laughs> Um, okay. We, uh, so we did play some games as we, Ooh, we, as did. we talked about. Just, um, yeah. And uh, do you want to explain the first one? I'll explain the second one. This is just a little extra. Yeah, but here yeah. you go. Yeah. So we talked games last week, how we do a little game night, holiday times. Uh, we, My wife and I got a game called Splickety Lit. Okay, good, because I could not remember the name of it. I'm like, which, good luck. <laughs> which is just lickety split with the syllables or the sounds of the, the two words flipped. Lick, lickety split, splickety lit. Apparently, that's called the spoonerism, for those that didn't know, like myself. <laughs> um, but, uh, oh, my gosh, this brain, this brain, this game will kill your brain. Um so basically, the the whole thing about the game is it asks a question. Within the question, there's usually some spoonerisms mixed in. So it's kind of hard to understand what the question is saying. You have to like flip it in your brain to make to figure out what the words are. And then when you understand the question, you know someone's going to try to answer the question. They have to answer it in a spoonerism. So you have to flip it. So like. Uh, one of the answers is George Washington. Mm-hmm. It has to be Ward Joshington because mm-hmm. you have to flip the two. Or Disneyland. It's got to be Disney Dan. Um, I'm surprised I said both of those. Kind that of was okay. good. That was good. And we did not uh, edit to like, give you time no, to think. No, we did not. That was on the fly. <laughs> Thank you. Um, oh, dude. But But the hardest part for me is that when they read the question – like the key words in the questions are all spoonerisms, all flipped. So if you don't understand what they're saying, you're like, I got I no idea what's right. going on. And it's also from a card reading perspective, very difficult. Very difficult. Because yeah. you really do need to know like what the question and what the answer is. Because for for instance, like on the box itself, it said like something like you'll the game you'll laugh like laugh your butt off or something like that what it was buff your yeah you'll buff your laugh your, your LUT, LUT off, off. Yeah. or something like that and they can't but you can't spell buff like laugh you can't spell l-a-g-u well, <laughs> l-a-u-g-h yeah you can't with spe- a b-a-u-g-h because that's you, a different word you would say something completely different so when you're reading it, sometimes the words are also spelled slightly different. Like so Citizen Kane right. was um, – um, I can't even think right now. Kittison Sane. Sane 
but it was spelled with an S, so you would get the S sound, and it was just weird. Right, right. But yeah, it was fun. It was definitely a mind melter. Oh my gosh, dude. So we played two rounds of that, and then... (laughs) And then we all took a nap. (laughs) And Um, then we played uh, this game called Reverse Charades. Yeah, which is a... Game that's been around for a while. Yeah, you would think. I mean, when you when I hear reverse charades, I think of uh, where you are given the answer <laughs> <laughs> and you are saying it, and then somebody has to charade it back to you to confirm the answer. <laughs> that would kind of make it would be a weird. It doesn't really make a lot of sense. <laughs> but the real version, the real way you play it is instead of one person getting up and acting it out and having their team guess. The team gets up and acts out and for one person for one person guessing. And that gets quite hilarious, especially the later and later it gets at night because oh um, when you have multiple people trying to do things like play Cupid or play, um, you know, uh, baseball, like baseball, like works really easily. You know, you got like, Oh yeah, I got four people here. Somebody's pitching the ball to me. Da, 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 like, okay. But you can't talk. So you have to kind of set it up <laughs> just going off of what other people do. But yeah, it gets, it gets pretty good. It was pretty fun. There was lots of laughs. There was five people just spectating, not even what, <laughs> not even playing. And they yeah. had a great time. Yeah. Um. So there you go. It, it's a good one. Yeah, if you, Don't, get, if you get the right crew, yeah. who's who's game? Yeah, it's good. But if 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 uh, if you do uh, a note about charades, just give yourself some time. Like, play a game of charades one time where it's not pressure. You're not in it for time because some things you need to paint the picture. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Yeah, because you can you know you can get some simple things like oh fishing got it casting got it got it but sometimes you need to get some like you know some good oh you know gosh. the Taj Mahal you really need to like <laughs> you really need some time to get in the mindset of <laughs> acting out the Taj Mahal. <laughs> Brandon is referring to a epic charades night that we had once, where we came up with all of these like. Well, we were using catchphrase. We were using catchphrase. Yeah, the game for, catchphrase for the clue. But playing charades yeah. with it. And so, yeah, so there was like like long phrases and things that you would never charade because that would be really hard. Mm-hmm. And we, we got pretty good. Yeah. We, we developed a couple of things that carried on throughout. So they were kind of like inside signals for different things like – you know, you draw the map on yeah. the wall. <laughs> like, this is the United States. Um, if I'm drawing on the wall, it's a map. And then people are like, okay, he's drawing on the map. I'm trying to show us where he's at. Um, well, that was the thing. There was like, there was two different ones. There was the drawing the map, which means I'm talking about a place. Right. And then the other thing was I'm acting out something like the Eiffel Tower. And when you guess Eiffel Tower, I hold my arms up like a shrug and be like, and look around like, like where a- am I? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're in Paris. And you're like, yeah. you got it. <laughs> so you got to, you got to come up oh with these things. Gosh. Cause like, yeah. Like how do you signal that you're talking about Paris as opposed to the Eiffel Tower? So right. And those are some, some tips for you. <laughs> there you go. If you, if you get some really toughies yeah. and have all night. Yeah. Because we didn't restrict, we were just like, just oh, go until we get it. They, they were, I mean, you'd be, if like, that was the thing. Your turn didn't end until whoever, until the group guessed it. What was it. the one that we did? It was like, visit. 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 It was, we acted that out for what, 20 minutes or something? Yeah. Because we were like, how? Because you're like, guest, you're like, friend. You to, you're like, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, visit. So, yeah. I would say get yourself a, a good list of book of, or a box of cards or some kind of you know random assortment of ideas and and objects and stuff like that and just do it without time do do it just yeah. low pressure and make it your resolution to get a group <laughs> of friends who will let you act out a charade for twenty minutes until they guess it yeah and then you know you got some friends yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good stuff, good stuff. Well, again, thanks so much for being with us on thanks this for hanging out. new eve. 
<laughs> the new eve? Yeah. The eve of new 20s? Yeah. Of the new 20s? The new, it's all new. <laughs> it's, everything's yeah. new. Everything's coming up new. Yeah. The new 20s. I I think it's really good. The new 20s? Yeah. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> Again, not planning 100 Get years on. ahead. <laughs> no. <laughs> we don't have to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they didn't do it. <laughs> they yeah, they didn't do it before. They're like, eh, another twenty's coming up in a thousand years. Yeah, exactly. Nah. They just claimed it. Oh no, yeah, like, the nah, roar- we're modern. Oh, the roaring twenties. Yeah, that's a great. We're thing. modern. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's call it, call it the twenties. Oh man, but yeah. But uh, I keep you probably hear this like <laughs> clinking in the background. I should not be doing that. Jews harp. Yeah. Um. But yeah, and uh, let us know what you guys are up to. What your New Year's resolutions yeah. are. Um. You can uh, email us on Gmail, tag N Brando, tag with two G's, N is in N. N is in new. New. <laughs> Brando. Um, I was going to say N is in the end of my my name that we just moved to the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, interesting. Uh, yeah. um, and, uh, and what games you guys like to play? Um, yeah. Hit yeah. us up. Uh, Twitter and Instagram as well. So. Tag and Brando. Yeah. Well, thanks so much, guys. And you guys knew up your year. Yeah. Make it that perfect vision of a year 2020. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> bye.